one. Forrest is all he has. David Haas, though, no one man of play, just wooded foothills. Yeah, and no, notably, no one mana play from either side, uh, which I think bodes better for Emulet Titan than it does uh, for David Haas. Something like a Goblin Guide here on the start would have been uh, a way for him to generate up, upwards of six to eight damage uh, from one, a one mana spell, whereas now he's forced to basically just go three U, four U, three U, three U with burn spells to the head and see if that's good enough. If he doesn't follow this up with a turn two idol on the Great Revel, chances are the game's over right now. Rossum has a pretty strong turn, too. It's Sakura Tribe Scout, followed by Golgari Rot Farm. He'll pick up that forest. And Haas just cracks the Wooded Foothills to 19 and finds a Tap Sacred Foundry. Really good turn, two there. There's Mountain and Searing Blaze. That'll take care of the Tribe Scout and knock Rossum to 17. Yeah, and that uh, stunts a bit of Rossum's development, but it looks like he has a great fall up here in Azusa. That's going to allow him to hit some land drops and uh, push further towards uh, Primeval Titan and getting that Kabir Crossroad plus, plus Balance Land combination started. Yeah, Ghost Quarter was the second land to put the Azusa out, and then Forest was replayed. So one land up remaining, look, using Ancient Stirrings to find something. Gemstone Mine picked up off the Stirrings. Now, the way that this is kind of... Uh, uh, started here from John Rossum's side. I'm not convinced he actually has a sixth mana. Whether or not he has a Primeval Titan is up for grabs. Uh, he had uh, two extra land drops that turn, but it looks like he... Uh, no, he played both. Excuse me. The first one was the Force for the Stirrings, and the second one was uh, the Gem Cell Mine off of the Stirrings. So. Well, if you're wondering about a Primeval Titan, on Haas's turn, he's going to cast a Gobble Guy and attack, and the trigger will reveal Summoner's Pack for Rossum. All right, well, now we just have to see, does Rossum have that extra land? My guess is no, but we'll know soon enough. And Rossum thinking about whether or not he wants to block. The Asusa is a 1-2 versus the 2-2 Goblin Guide. Well, in this spot, Azusa has basically done her job already, allowing Rossum to play two extra lands. Uh, odds are that Azusa doesn't have much value left after this. Um, Rossum, I believe, his hand after flashing it. Summoner's Pack number two and a Trinket Mage. Uh, the Trinket Mage allowing Rossum to pick up Amulet of Vigor could turn a future, uh, you know, Simic uh, Growth Chamber or another Bounce Line into extra mana, but Searing Blaze takes care of that possibility. Yeah, the Goblin Guy is going to connect. That knocked Rossum to 15. Then Haas cracked an Arid Mace to 18 himself and another Searing Blaze. Asusa down, Rossum at 12. On his turn, he drew that Summoner's Pact, and here's that Trinket Mage you mentioned. Yeah, this spot for here, uh, I, I assumed it was going to be Amulet of Vigor because that is an easy way for, for Rossum to uh, generate a lot of mana next turn if he's able to draw into a land that enters the battlefield tapped. Makes it so that he can Summoner's Pact from Primeval Titan and cast it immediately. Yep, Amulet Vigor was found and cast, and now we're back on Haas's side of things. There's Eidolon on the Great Revel. Bloodstained Myers to land. No attacks with the Goblin Guide. Not interested in trading that with the Trinket Mage. Yeah, at this point, a land is what gets Rossum out of this. And uh, attacking with Goblin Guide is just going to trade with Trinket Mage and potentially give Rossum uh, an out for a land. Back on Rossum's side, here's a Walking Ballista for two. That's just outside of Eidolon range, so no damage off of casting that spell. And... Rossum can just use that if he wants right away to trade with one of these creatures. Probably the Eidolon if he goes for that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, Eidolon is the more threatening one. The Goblin Guide is currently being checked by these both of these creatures. So I think he's going to basically wait for David to blink. Or if he draws the land, he can save himself two damage by killing the Eidolon before casting his Summoner's Pact. Oh, back on Haas' side. He's going to suspend a Rift Bolt. He didn't attack last turn. And once again, he's going to pass without attacking. Got a lot worse to try to attack into that walking ballista, though if he wanted to force action, attacking would be a good way to do it. Decides against it. Now, if he attacks with both creatures, odds are Rossum's just going to go put walking ballista in front of Goblin Guide and then spin the two counters to kill the Eidolon of the Great Revel. Um, you know, there's also the chance that Rossum's just like, you know what, I'm just going to trade both my creatures for both his creatures, get them off the battlefield. Mine are significantly worse than his right now. So, Yep, that makes sense. Rossum's going to start his turn by removing one Ballista counter to hit the Eidolon, and he'll finish that off right away. Yep. My guess he drew a land. He's going to copy Rot Farm. 
floated mana and then return it. This is a trick that uh, Amulet players have been using for a long time. You return the, the bounce land itself to your hand or the Vesuva copying the bounce land uh, so that if you draw a future uh, Azusa or uh, something like that, you actually have this land still in your hand that can generate multiple triggers, multiple extra mana via the Amulet of Vigor. With that, Eidolon dealt with. Rossum's now going to take the opportunity to summon his pack for Primeval Titan. Cast that right away and drum up Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison. Those will untap because of the amulet. Give that Titan Vigilance and Haste. Bounce land trigger off the Garrison. He'll pick up that Ghost Quarter. He's the attack from the Titan. This is an attack for eight. Titan triggers again. Not sure how much it matters. I would have liked to have seen Rossum get a little aggressive here and attack with a Trinket Mage as well, especially if he's going to be gaining two life off of this Kabir Crossroads. Uh, but with the with the Rift Bolt looming, I could definitely see a reason to hold the, the Trinket Mage back because uh, Rift Bolt plus another three damage burn spell targeting Primeval Titan leaves him without a whole lot at the ready. Uh, but he still has that backup summoner's back for an additional Primeval Titan next turn. Yeah, the find is Kabira Crossroads and Colony Gardens. He'll go to 14 and make a plant token. I think the Skullcrack is in response to the Kabira Crossroads. We're going to get some confirmation on that. But my assumption is that uh, he is going to go from 12 to 9. That makes more sense. And that is what happened. L.A. Raff showing up pretty regularly these days. <laughs> <laughs> we have been seeing a lot of plant tokens. A lot of amulets tighten in the modern format right now. That's... Eight, I believe, is going to go unblocked. Now, David Haas will fall to 10 here. Haas is going to crack that Bloodstained Mire, falling to 9. He's going to need a pretty big turn here. He does at least have that Rift Bolt coming off suspend. Could potentially lock this up on his turn and likely needs to win on this turn. There's a lot of combinations that do it from here. Rift Bolt comes off to spend. That goes upstairs. That should rock, knock Rossum to six. Yeah, that's Skullcrap playing a huge role in the spot. Uh, kept him basically from gaining the two life. Uh, dealt basically five damage. And uh, put Rossum down to six here with that Rift Bolt. And if he had a three damage spell in hand already, all he needed to draw was one more. Monastery Swift Spear. That is not it. And Haas just has to pass back. Now back on Rossum's side, he's going to pay for that Summoner's Pact. That's step one on the turn. Yeah, and with the uh, the additional Summoner's Pact in hand, plus the ability to uh, just like get copy the Kabir Crossroads with the Vesuva, and then uh, bounce the Ves or bounce the Kabir Crossroads with the Primeval Titan getting one of the bounce lands. This it's too much life gain. It's not. It's not unless David Haas has another Skull Crack here, and somehow Rossum doesn't find Lethal. Yeah, he should be able to find his uh, double strike land here, right? Yeah, Sun Home, Fortress of the Legion, uh, makes for a giant primeval titan. I, I don't think there's any real card in David Haas's deck that can prevent this attack uh, for a large chunk of damage, roughly 16 minus the toughness, and that's if the Trinket Mage doesn't uh, come in as well. Yeah, not going to see a main deck deflecting palm here. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, we have the decks in front of us. We know that there's right. main deck deflecting palm, but... Uh, I have been hit in the face with a deflecting palm in game one before. Yikes. Don't count them out. <laughs> that must feel terrible. It's not good, Gene. It's, <laughs> not, it's not good at all. All right, so Rossum here, uh, he's trying to figure out the line. He has access to a summoner's pack. That's a lot. There's a lot of little combinations of things that he can do to, to try to get through lethal. And he's trying to figure out if there's any way to play around him. X, Y, Z. Yep. He'll start by using the Stronghold on his Titan, and then he's going to attack with that 8-power Titan and the Trinket Mage. Probably will Titan trigger. There's Sun Home. Let's see what the second land is. Simic Growth Chamber. Those will untap. Still has untapped Gemstone Mine. He'll pick up his Kabira Crossroads with that Growth Chamber trigger. And that's going to do it. That double strike on that eight power creature will clean up, and Haas is going to pick him up. Rossum is a winner. We're going to game two. And let's take a look at the sideboards and see if David Haas has anything that can get him back in this match after taking that rough game one loss. 
Cyborg's pretty clean, which I do like to see from a burn deck. He has four Searing Blood, four Rest in Peace, four Smash to Smithereens, two Path to Exile, and one Scab Clan Berserker. Do you like Path to Exile in this matchup? I mean, I think you, you gotta, just because you can sometimes steal a game by hitting a Primeval Titan with Path to Exile with the, uh, you know, the plus two plus so and haste on the stack, you know. For, for it, it's not great, right? Like, it's gonna be basically dead until you're starting to lose. But if uh, no, there are some times where, like, you know, a, a lava spike or something's not going to be better in that spot. So I, I, I don't love it, but at the same time, I, I think it's fine. Uh, as for the rest of the sideboard here, not a whole lot. Um, Searing Blood could be good. You know, the, the, the Amiel Titan deck does play a bunch of things like Sakura Tribe Scout, Azusa, uh, Lost but Seeking, as well as uh, occasionally the, 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 the other freaking Sakura Tribe Scout whose name escapes me because it's from like 8th edition and I never saw play until very it's from recently. Tempest. Well, originally. Originally. Uh, yeah, it's in modern. Tempest is not modern uh, legal. Yeah, he, oh, weird. When did that happen? Yeah. Anywho, uh, so Searing Blood does have some targets. We saw Searing Bloods be particularly good in game one, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple Searing Bloods uh, out of the sideboard. So Master Smithereens does also take care of Amulet of Vigor, which is a, a huge part of the speed of the Amulet Titan deck. And when you're playing as Burn, Amulet is very important. So we can see quite a few cards coming in from David. I don't know how many of them are going to be overly effective, though. Yeah, we'll see exactly uh, how he sideboards we go into the games. On Rossum's side, his options, ooh, four Assassin's Trophy. That, that's a new one. We did see Golgari Rot Farm in the first game here. Three copies of Memora side, so a heavily black sideboard here. Yeah. Two Negate, a Cavern of Souls, an Engineered Explosives, one Remyap Excavator, a Reclamation Sage, a Rurik Thar the Unbowed, and a Hornet Queen. Yeah, hilariously enough, uh, I'm pretty sure Jotham Rossum worked with uh, Edgar Mahalis uh, on this uh, list because Edgar is playing three copies of Cranial Extraction and Rossum is playing three copies of Memoricide. And uh, they literally do the exact same thing except Cranial Extraction has Arcane, and which means you can splice onto it, but it also means that it can, it can be countered by the uh, one balloon, one counter target Arcane Char or Spirit. Spirit Arcane spell. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as far as how Rossum's going to sideboard, I, I don't think you want a lot. Something like Negate could help uh, fend off some of these more powerful sideboard cards uh, or scary ones, but uh, and it, it could just protect your life total from a lethal burn spell, so I expect he'll be bringing those in. Um, the extra land with Cavern of Souls, not really necessary. More side Assassin's Trophy, not where you want to be in this matchup. Hornet Queen, a little too slow. What I do love, Reclamation Sage taking care of uh, some potentially annoying cyborg card, but also it just takes out Eidolon of the Great Revel and provides a blocker for a Goblin Guy. I think Rorkthar Unbowed, once you cast it, is lights out. Your opponent is dead 100% of the time in this matchup, unless you are at 6 life and they are at 20. Uh, and then Engine Explosives, I could see it coming in, but I don't like it too much. John Rossum is relatively new to this Amulet Titan strategy, but he's a player that has quite a few accolades here on the SEG Tour. Last year he played in 19 Opens with 8 top 8s and a win. Those are amazing stats. Yeah, that's that's a heck of a year if i ever seen one. Ross, I'm really killing it lately. Uh, he was having some trouble at the end of last year trying to get on, back on track. Uh, couldn't really decide between Jeskai Control or Humans, and those were his only two real modern decks. And then this year, he comes back, he's like, you know what? Screw all that nonsense. I'm just going to play the best deck. Amulet Titan here. Off to a great start and up a game in round seven. 20-year-old from Spencer, Massachusetts. Probably not too far to travel to Worcester for young John Rossum. Oh, yeah, not, not too bad. I, I'm, I'm actually kind of jealous of the, the players who can get to uh, Worcester without having to take a plane or a train. Or both. Yeah, or and, both. And an automobile. Yeah, I, I literally did the John Candy uh, on, on Friday. It was not fun. <laughs> I took Uber to the airport, airport to another airport. Then I had to take a, an Uber to a train, and then a train to here, and then I had to walk half a mile in the negative two wind chill cold. It was cold. You didn't bring a coat. I don't I was own a concerned. coat. Yeah, you don't need to own a you coat usually. Yeah, yeah. I, do. I, I wear a hoodie. Yeah. I saw you, and I, I, I said, I don't know if we want to walk. It's very cold. And you're like, yeah, it's fine. It wasn't fine. It no, I, immediate regret. I was like, man, <laughs> I should have just paid six bucks. <laughs> just Uber, man. Right. <laughs> when in doubt, if it's cold, just Uber. Yeah. Just 
you know, be safe. Anyway, we got our match back underway. David Hosted Mulligan to six. He's on the play. Inspiring Vantage into Lava Spike. Rossum at 17. Rossum's going to start things off with a Forest and Ancient Stirrings. Yeah, not the best start for the burn deck. Uh, no one-drop creature is a, a pretty big deal, and this is the second game in a row this has happened. It makes winning games a lot harder when you don't lead with a Swiss Spear or a Goblin Guide. Kabira Crossroads was found out the stirrings as well. Rossum should be going to work with that pretty soon. For the second turn, Haas will deploy a Goblin Guide that will attack and reveal a Sakura Tribe Scout. Sacred Foundry tapped as the second land. For Rossum, he will deploy that Tribe Scout, play that Kabir Crossroads back to 17. Yeah, this incremental life game from lands like Kabir Crossroads with the ability uh, via Sakura Tribe Scout uh, to, to replay it definitely gives this uh, Amulet Titan deck a lot of breathing room against the burn strategies. However, this uh, Searing Blaze knocking off the Tribe Scout, dealing a bunch of damage. That's exactly where Burn wants to be in this matchup, putting pressure on the opponent and using those Burn spells to slow him down and uh, pop him in the head. Yeah, knocked Rossum to 14 with the Blaze. The Goblin Guide made it 12. Gemstone Mine was revealed to the Goblin Guide trigger, so Rossum did draw a card off of that, as it were. For his third turn, he'll play that Gemstone Mine. And here's a Sousa lost from Seek it, lost butt seeking. Um, Looks like he might not have another land to play this turn, or maybe uh, the spell's on the stack. Not sure where we're at with this. Yeah, he's he's trying. I, I guess he's like, okay, I've played one land for the turn, but Zeus gives me two. Uh, there, there have been some recent rules changes on how additional land drops are uh, like tracked, and uh, I think there, there's probably just needed for some clarification somewhere in there. Could have been a question about priority as well. As you see, Rossum plays Talaria West and Simic Growth Chamber. That land has a trigger, so if that was the second land, you could respond to that, but you right. can't respond to the other land drops. Correct. But Rossum will pick up his Gemstone Mine. Haas will go to his turn, attack with Goblin Guide. Rossum will once again draw a card. I'm quite surprised that Rossum actually picked up Gemstone uh, Mine instead of the Kabir Crossroads, uh, since he doesn't have the ability to, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I guess it makes sense, right? If he needs the six mana here, and that's his only untapped land to cast Primeval Titan, uh, you know, returning the Gemstone Mine makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious to see how this turn plays out. Give me a better idea of what he has going on over there. Yeah, Rossum did throw the Asusa in front of the Goblin Guide, so he'll stay at 12. No follow-up from Haas. Rossum starts his turn with the Amulet of Vigor. There's the Boros Garrison that was revealed to the Goblin Guide. That'll untap, and here's Summoner's Pack, six mana at the ready. Yeah, this is uh, definitely things going right for Rossum. He blocked that Goblin Guide because he knew that if he got to untap, uh, he was in good shape. Going down to ten, there's a there's a chance that uh, I, I don't. I mean, I couldn't. Pause, I mean, I can't think of a thing that would actually kill him. So I'm I'm trying to think like because he only has three mana. Three bolts is only nine. Um. Boros Charm plus Bolt, you know, plus Land or whatever, that's not enough. I don't know. I'm curious what was going through his head there. I might go ask him after the match. Yeah, not sure. In the meantime, we're going to resolve this Primeval Titan. Colony Garden, Vesuva picked up. Plant Token's going to come off of that. Get Elliot Raff back on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm guessing, uh, yes, Vesuva does copy the Kabir Crossroads to generate a little more life here. Rossum could have gone for uh, Boros, or, uh, sorry, Vesuva to copy Boros Garrison and then uh, uh, Slayer Stronghold to give the Primeval Titan uh, haste instead of playing around Path to Exile and or Deflecting Palm by not doing so. Untap the Colony Garden, use that to cast Ancient Stirrings, use that Crossroads that was the Vesuva copy to cast the Amulet of Vigor that the Stirrings picked up. And for Haas, here's a Lightning Helix. Plus yeah. a Lightning Bolt. Those are aimed at the Primeval Titan. Haas will go to 23. Primeval Titan down. Yeah, I mean, you, it's clearing it the hard way, but you got to clear it. Otherwise, it's going to run you over. And uh, even though Rossum doesn't know that David Haas has zero copies of Deflecting Palm in the 75, uh, he's, he's going to play around it, but David basically has no other way to get that Titan off the table other than Double Burn Spell slash... Uh, Pat the Exile. Goblin got attacked, gave Rossum a Golgari Rot Farm off the top, and Rossum went ahead and blocked with his plant token, staying at 14. Eilon of the Great Rebel added to the battlefield for Haas post-combat. We're back on Rossum's side. Yes, noticeably, uh, Rossum did not 
give himself a, a backup way to put another Titan onto the battlefield. There's a, unless he has one naturally or a second summoner's pack, he's not going to be able to Titan this turn. Yeah, it's tough to tighten as he did start by paying for that summoner's pack. So not all that much mana available. Just gets to five with Gemstone Mine being the land. Back to Haas. He'll attack for four with his creatures. That reveals a Primeval Titan. That's hanging out on top of Rossum's deck. And Haas doesn't want to deal with that. He's got two lands in hand. He's going to concede. John Rossum 2-0 over David Haas on burn. You know, I respect the snap concession uh, so that I can head to the concessions. The line's been long. Yeah, it has. <laughs> so I'm sure David has had enough 